On this episode of Triumph by Air, we introduce the new project car, Project Wanker, brought to you by Doritos! Ah! They went everywhere, oh my god. You know, I've never tried these tangy pickle ones. So everybody says. They taste like they'd be really good with like queso or something. They're made, they just taste like lime, really. Tangy pickle. Anyway, this is Project Wanker. Um, it's a 1973 Triumph Spitfire, as you probably guessed. Show is called Triumph by Air, and um, I picked it up. It was about three miles from my work. Um, Giselle sends me the link to this thing while I'm at work at midnight. She goes to sleep, and by the time she wakes up, it's on a trailer in her driveway. Because I texted the guy. When I was at work, he was awake, and I left right at 7.30, and went and hemmed and hawed and talked to him for probably about two hours, and then I came back to the trailer and bought the thing. Why did I buy the thing? I've got Triumph Spitfires. Why did I want this one specifically? Well, it's the reason why I'm eating Doritos. Because... Despite also being a pretty clean example of a 1973 Spitfire, which is a desirable year, this is the engine from a Mazda RX-7. It's a 12A rotary. Yes, rotary. No pistons, no connecting rods, just one magic spinning Dorito, as it's known. It'll rev to 9,000 RPM all day long. Um, you have to run two-stroke oil in it to save the apex seals, and uh, it makes about double the original horsepower of the Triumph Spitfire engine. So I'm excited because if you had asked me what swap I want to put in a Spitfire, name an engine. What do you want to put in a Spitfire? I'd say a rotary. And then Giselle finds me a car that has a rotary in it and expects me not to buy it. Yeah, that worked well. So, I picked this thing up a little while back. It had been in a barn for years and years, decades. Apparently it was a running and driving car, and you can tell, it's all here, it's all sorted. I don't have to do any of the random BS work. At least the swap is complete. It was running and driving, it's just, it was parked for decades. So, I've just gotta get it running again, and then I gotta go through, I basically have to restore this thing. The brakes are locked solid, the clutch is locked solid, the throttle is locked solid. All three pedals don't do anything. They're just completely hard. So I've got to make it a driving car, but she's pretty rust free. It's had one repair done. It's got some blemishes in the paint, but it's also British racing green, which I wanted a British racing green car. I started with a red one. Um, the Shaguar was originally a light blue. Someone had painted it a dark blue, and I painted it darker bluer. But I wanted a British Racing Green one. So now I have one with the swap that I wanted. And actually, this is a very solid car for what I picked it up for. So first things first, we got to get this carburetor unstuck because she is... Oof. She's... Uh, Probably not seen the light of day or moved since the W administration. So uh, let's get this thing off and get her soaking, get her pulled apart. 
Now let's get one thing absolutely straight right now. I have no prior experience with rotaries. None. I love them, but I have no experience working on them. So everything I know is just in theory. And everything I know is just, all right, it's four cycles of an engine, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. It's got to work that way. So if I say something wrong throughout the course of this series, I'm sorry, but that's just going to happen because my knowledge is with piston engines and this thing is a whole nother animal. My dad had one before I was born, an RX-7, not a Spitfire. And I kind of wanted to pick one up for him, but now I have the best of both worlds. I have classic British styling with Japanese power and performance. Let's dive in. All right, let's take you guys on a tour here. Start with the Doritos. This is a Wankel Rotary. And if I grab a Dorito that is the classic Dorito shape. The reason why they call it a Magic Dorito is because it has one tri-pointed rotor that spins around on a semi-elliptical planetary bearing here. So it goes kinda in this fashion. And as it does, suck, squeeze, bang, blow, three of those are all happening at the same time. So the reason why it makes so much power for such small displacement, it's hard to measure displacement on a rotary, is because it's doing multiple power strokes per revolution of this rotor, which is delicious. Now, this is a 12A, which means that it is a 1.2, it's actually like an 1190 something. So it's actually, 300 cc smaller than the piston engine that was in the Spitfire originally. Well, actually, to tell you the truth, 73, yeah, 73 would have been a 1500. So the 1500 that was in here made 45 horsepower in North American trim because of all of its catalytic converters and smog pump and all those gibbons. And this makes just, I think, north of 100 horsepower. So this thing is double for being smaller, but they are thirsty. That's a four barrel. The Spitfire had a single side draft. This is a, I mean, not a particularly large by like V8 standards, but this is a four barrel on a 1.2 liter. So it goes to show that this car is probably not gonna get a very good gas mileage. And the original Spitfire tank is still in there, which means that it's a eight gallon tank and let's say that this is maybe 15 miles to the gallon. So I'm not going to be going very far per tank, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Maybe being in such a light car, it gets a little bit better. That being said, the Mazda that was in originally was not very heavy either. So cool part about it, though, is that the Achilles heel of these Triumphs is that they come with the either just a four speed or they have a four speed with an overdrive, which actually I have one right there that's supposed to go into Giselle's car. Now, my red car, I put an overdrive in, but the Spit, the Shaguar has just the four speed. This thing has the legit Mazda five speed from the RX-7. So it's much better off in terms of gearing. Now this interior is actually in pretty good shape. You can't smell it on your TV set there, but this thing reeks. It smells like mouse. And I'm not entirely happy with the hantavirus. I might pop this top down while it's in the garage just to let it air out. But I'm thinking that there's mouse house either in here or in here. But problem is, I can't open the trunk. And there's no good way to get in here if that lock doesn't work because you can't go through the back there's a gas tank there and it bolts from this side and you can't go from underneath because there's no hole so i haven't quite figured out how i'm gonna get that open but 
I have a feeling that there's lots of mouse house in there. But other than that, she's a solid car. The door is actually open and closed without the windshield frame falling. Because the Shaguar, you open both doors and you feel like the car's going to break in half. She's pretty solid underneath. I mean, the paint isn't fantastic. But if I was going to paint a Spitfire, I'd paint this one. You know, there's not, there's no rust here. My red car is rusting out right here. You can see there's some, what is that, wax? I mean, come on, go. You know you're going to get zapped in here. So if I was going to paint a Spitfire, it'd be this one. And I'd just shoot it green again, honestly. I'd just give it a better paint job. And because I'm me, I would take the side marker lights off and fill those in. Because I hate side marker lights. I'm doing it on the charger as well. I'm just going to fill these in. Can't stand side marker lights. Did it on the Jaguar. Going to do it on this car. But first off, i got to see if this thing will run. Now... In most normal engines, what you would do is immediately make sure the thing rotates. Well, on this, you can just pull it over by hand. It rotates really freely. Like, I can, I can just twist the water pump here and spin the motor over. I'm hoping that means that it's just a Wankel rotary and they don't make a whole lot of compression cold. And not that the apex seals are completely blown out and that's why it was parked. It's the thing with buying cars that have been parked for decades you don't know why they were parked for decades so you gotta figure that out and sometimes you figure that out the hard way but hopefully that's not the case i really don't want to pull this engine apart but if i have to it's in a pretty easy car to do it i mean you know you pull the hood off then pull the radiator this thing has an oil cooler on it which is weird and then just pull the engine out it's not in the way of anything so hoping to not have to do that but even if i do at least they've done all the hard part you know they've made the exhaust they've made the engine mounts they've made all the lines for the radiator they found a radiator of fit they even wired in a fan so fingers crossed i'm gonna do that one that it just rebuild the carb pull the spark plugs out maybe replace them maybe get new ones eat another bag of Doritos, and pop a battery in and fire it up. Here's the whole thing. I'll tell you, this thing is convoluted. It's got vacuum hoses and extra linkages and things that I didn't know existed, but let's see what she looks like. Okay, that's still hooked up. This is, wow. This has got a lot of shit. Where does that even go? It goes down to this thingy and does something. And that's the doodad that... Yeah. Oh, they're held on with clips. That's great. Wow. I think I'm gonna have to just plug all those off. I have no idea what that... So this goes down... This goes down to some sort of doodad that pulls on a thing that does this thing here. Is that the, like, vacuum secondary or something? Do they not let you use the secondary if it's cold? I, I don't know. Throttle cable st still hooked up because I couldn't get to the thing, but the good news is, from what I can see, there's no water or rust in the intake. There's a little bit of rust on the carburetor, but to be expected, just open air so that's good that might be a good thing it might be golden uh, one thing to note this is definitely a stock setup they put this in here and there's no aftermarket anything on this it's also a funky flange so I can't just drop a different carburetor on here which is a shame because I'd love to get rid of all this garbage but let's make it work I guess This thing is convoluted. Holy cow. There's all sorts of things that don't go to anything anymore. There's valves that are blocked off. There's a sensor for some reason. 
This was probably a late 70s engine and they had a lot of emissions on it. A lot of emissions that I think we don't need anymore. I'm gonna take this apart. I'm gonna soak the whole thing in jet fuel because I'm an aircraft mechanic and I have jet fuel. But you can use diesel or the actual like carb cleaner. I have a bucket of the Berryman's carb dip which works really well but it's not big enough for this so just gonna use jet fuel and some time try to scrub this thing down um, yeah we're gonna do a lot of deleting look at this thing I don't know what this does right here it seems to maybe push pull on this maybe it stops the idle from idling down I don't know I guess we'll figure it out. Now that I've got it apart, it seems to be a little bit more free. The blades will actually turn, so that's good. But let's tear it down. wanted to bring you guys in here it's not fantastic but it definitely could be a lot worse I've made a lot worse run good so hopefully when this is all cleaned up she'll uh, at least operate if I can verify the car works and I can do everything else get the car driving good and then I can upgrade I saw an intake online yesterday I really wanted that would clean that up a lot. So now I can plunk this. I just did the classic dog move. I'm holding a screwdriver. Plunk this in there and then scrub her down and keep going. Figured while the card was soaking, now would be a good time. Now would be a good time to put a battery in her and see if she burns to the ground. So the way that Spitfires are usually wired is that there's a little uh, solenoid right here that goes to the starter and the starter only has one wire going to it. But this has the Mazda 
starter on it, which appears to be pretty well buried. I don't want to have to replace that. I hope it's okay. But uh, it's most obviously got this big red power wire going to that. And then this big ground is pretty well grounded right to the case of the engine. So I don't have to worry about the wires being backed up. Where? But I trust nothing on this car. So I'm going to throw a good old lightning cube in her and see if I get fire. Car burns to the ground. I, well, I guess we will make good TV here. Right? Okay. Don't smell anything burning. Don't hear anything ticking. I'm just now noticing this thing has two ignition coils. Interesting. Is that a Mazda thing? I have no idea. It's got two spark plugs per rotor, so maybe it's got two ignition coils to fire the two spark plugs. I don't know. I am also noticing that the heater is hooked up, so that's a good thing. Here's a pro tip. If you're going to put a battery into your project car to see if the electrical works, make sure that battery actually has a charge. This one doesn't physically fit, but who cares? This one's actually charged. good news. That means the starter works. And I don't have to fix that at least. Good, because it's buried. Because this was never designed to be in here. I'm going to check for power at the coils, just so I know if we turn this over, if it's going to light or not. I mean, if we don't have power, we're not going to have spark. And there's no point in trying to shove fuel down it and spin it over. But if we have spark, then maybe this thing will kick off. Yeah, we've got power. Maybe it'll start. I just went to pop out a spark plug and I went to grab the socket and just try it on there and I realized that this thing was in there finger tight. So I'm going to pop all the spark plugs out. Um, there are four spark plugs in this, but there's only two cylinders? Rotors. There's only two rotors. So the top one's labeled T and the bottom one's labeled L, I assume for lower. The plugs themselves look like they were new and then somebody just stuck them in there and they've been sitting. Either that or they were new and it was shortly before parked it or they, it runs amazing. Let's hope for that. Let's hope it runs amazing. I'm going to at least make sure all of them are tight and uh, see if she fires off. Well, this really is a here goes nothing situation because I'm just going to throw some go juice down the car and turn the key and see what happens. If this starts, I would be truly, truly amazed. Yeah. <laughs> Who could have dunked that was going to happen? All right, well, let's see if we even get spark. You know, I should pop that cap off. Just take a look, see what's in there. Points! Oh, and they are back. Oh, wow! <laughs> I had to bring you guys in for this. Look at... Get out of the way. Look at those. Oh, my God. That is horrible. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a little point sanding. Look at these funky rotors, too. Uh, the, 
more I learn about rotaries, the less I know. I got it all cleaned up. This thing was filthy. I just want to point out how weird this is. There's one, two on the outside part of the rotor, and then there's one, two, three on the inside part of the rotor right there, but one and two are on those two, which go where? Wait, I'm, I'm so confused. There's two wires in from the two coils. One of them goes to the center, which makes sense. But then the other one goes to right here. So that plug right there is another power input. So these two are out and these two are out and these two are in. Dear Lord. Well, all I know is I cleaned it up and I hope it works. Because I really, if I pulled all these spark plug wires off, I'd never be able to put them back. I haven't the slightest clue what I'm doing. But, that's how you figure out. You just do it. Upon further troubleshooting, I found it wasn't the points that were the issue, it was actually the connection on the wire going to the coil. So now we've got ground signal going to the coil, we've got power coming to the coil. So hopefully I get spark now. So let's give it a shot. All right, got good spark now. I'm gonna just double check and make sure that I still got spark on the top. Come on, give it. I don't know why the guy before me labeled these one, two, three, and four. They're not cylinders. And they're labeled one top, one L on the or one T and one L on the cap. And they're labeled T and L on the rotor. And this is one. So I don't know why he didn't just follow that, but anyway. I'm getting spark. Let's throw some more fire maker down it and see what happens. I have a vacuum leak somewhere or something. I'm hearing a uh, popping. Honestly, these aren't the right spark plugs for this engine. Somebody stacked washers to try to make them sit up far enough to be able to get them in there. I think they have to be the small diameter. So this might have to wait until I can get parts tomorrow. You can see the difference in the old plugs and the new plugs. The old ones, they stack three different washers on there in an attempt to get the flats to stick out far enough that you can even tighten the things down. They're also a different style plug. So they're different heat ranges, I think, too. Yeah, so this will definitely help. Oh, by the way, world's most expensive chip clip. I just learned something when I was trying to find the spark plugs for this thing. The L and the T doesn't mean top and lower. It means leading and trailing. The Dorito must be going, must be going this way. So it's leading at the bottom and trailing at the top. 
the more you know. Got our new starter from Rami Lozado. Just a standard replacement. Um, it was a little difficult finding it, but other than that, there was no core on this, so I get to keep my old one, which is nice. But uh, some of the guys on the forum said that that was spinning absolutely fast enough, and there's other reasons why it won't start, but uh, I wanted to throw a new starter on there anyway, because I needed to get into there for the slave cylinder, and this is a forever car. I'm gonna keep this thing. You know, all my other Spitfires are great, but this is the one I always wanted to do. The funny thing about this is that I'm finding a lot of parts that have the Mitsubishi logo. Which is weird, because this is a Mazda. But, who knows? So, let me slap this in there and uh, let's get going. Now that the interior is out, you can get a clear view of the starter. And what we have a clear view of is mouse. Mouse nest. Ugh, I found it everywhere. They had eaten the seats. They had eaten, well, the carpet. And looks like the starter is pretty well junk. So we'll get this out and we'll get a new one in here or maybe get this one rebuilt. Depends on how hard this is to find and see if we can't get that motor spinning over faster. Another thing I'm doing because the forums told me to is dumping a whole bunch of, they said trans fluid. I'm using Marvel Mystery Oil because A, it's what I had and B, I feel like it lubricate just a little better. But the concept is on the edges of your Dorito, Dorito, you have your little apex seals that spin around. Well, those apex seals are known to stick if they've been sitting for a long time. And what they're hearing on rotation is uneven compression, which on a piston engine would mean that there's a cylinder that doesn't have compression. On this, you don't have cylinders, you have rotors. And each rotor has three cylinders, you want to call it? They're doing all of the combustion things, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. There's three of them going on at each time for each rotor, so there's six total. So if you've got an uneven turning, it means that one of your, well, it could mean that one of your apex seals is not sealing. So taking the spark plugs out and I'm dumping a whole bunch of mystery oil through it and I'm going to rotate it around and hopefully I can build up some compression. That is an old trick with with uh, piston engines so we'll see if it works with rotaries. I'd like to reiterate, I know nothing about rotaries. This is my first one. I'm not going to eat this. This has been out here for three weeks and it's covered in gasoline and carb cleaner and all sorts of other garbage I do not want to eat. And Mr. O has been sitting in there for a while now, so I'm going to try to rotate it through by hand and see how much of a bloodbath we get. Oh yeah, there it goes. Oh, <laughs> oh murder she wrote is out of gear. smells in here now. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, 
Oh, it's trying. Damn it. So close. And sadly, that's going to do it for today's episode of Triumph by Air. Um, I kind of always knew it was going to need Apex seals. I mean, that's the running joke with the Mazda rotaries. Oh, it needs Apex seals. Yeah, yeah, it actually does. It's got incomplete compression. There's no amount of Marvel Mystery Oil that's going to bring it back. Some of the guys on the forum suggested dragging it at like 30 miles an hour in first gear to get the rotor really a winging, and then once it starts, like rev the shit out of it. But I don't have brakes on this car. It's winter. That ain't gonna happen. So, we're gonna push this one to the side for a little while. Got some other projects gotta get working on. But uh, you will see this car again. This will be a multi-part series. The next time you see this car, we will be ripping this motor out. And hopefully I can get John and Dave in on that. So, until then, like, subscribe, and I will see you next time on another episode of Triumph by Air.